Keeping tabs on what state lawmakers are up to just got harder. The legislature has given itself the power to make its own decisions about what records will be made public. CBS 17, other members of the media, and the general public often use that information to get you the answers that you're looking for. But doing that will now be more difficult. When most people think of the state budget, they think of just that. How are our tax dollars going to be spent? But inside this year's more than 600-page budget is a section that makes legislators custodians of all the records they create while in office. It gives them full discretion of what they make public, which can limit transparency. We, the people of North Carolina, pay for everything that the legislature produces. We pay the salaries, we pay their operating budget, and yet they've chosen to completely exempt themselves from the statutes that govern the rest of the government. When House Speaker Tim Moore was asked about who was responsible for putting the open records change in the budget, this was his answer. I don't remember where it came from. I, I think the wall, I think the way it's written, I'm told is structured in a way that's fair, that makes sense, but I'm not the expert on it, so I'm giving you more opinion than uh, than. than true analysis of it. Moore went on to say that he believes some requests have just one objective. They're designed to to add to cost and harass and ends up costing the taxpayers money. So how do you balance that with ensuring that the public has full transparency of, of what's allowed? And, and I'm very proud of, of our policy of, you know, of what we turn over. Sarah Ludington is the director of Duke Law's First Amendment Clinic, which helps people navigate public records requests. I don't see this as a balanced solution whatsoever. In my mind, the legislature certainly is entitled to a certain amount of confidentiality when it's, when it's drafting and deliberating, but at some point, all of that should become public records so that we know what our elected representatives are doing on our behalf. Senate leader Phil Berger was also asked about the change in the law. There are a number of things that, uh, that we do uh, that um, uh, the individual members uh, should have the ability to make a determination as to uh, what, uh, what, what they are in, uh, what, what they determine to be a public record and what they determine uh, to be uh, something they'll release. Uh, I think it's largely uh, the practice that's been in place for a long time. It's really troubling to me. I think there's really very little to be gained by secrecy in governance, especially in a democracy where we have to know what our elected representatives are doing or we can't intelligently select them. And so, Russ, this includes emails and everything. Correspondence, all of that. Wow. Absolutely. Um, one other thing that Sarah Ludington also brings up that concerns her is that if you retire mm -hmm. as a member of the state legislature, typically all that documentation goes over to the state archives, right, where all of us can research or go back even 100 years from now right. to go back and see how government was run or why decisions were made. Now someone retiring or choosing not to run or who loses office has the option perhaps to not turn it over and hmm. destroy it if they want to. Very there are a lot of questions about this and where it's going. Um, plenty of folks in our industry and, and, and Sarah Ludington as well think this will potentially end up, you know, challenged in the courts, but we'll have to we'll have to see. We'll and have to she, see. She mentioned we the people pay for what they do. We do. Right. right we so. do. All right. Russ, thanks.